Good morning. It's time for Daily Chapel at the LCMS International Center in St. Louis. The text is Psalm 32. The Reverend Sean Denzer is preaching. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. Psalm 32. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. Be not like a horse or a mule without understanding, which must be curbed with bit and bridle, or it will not stay near you. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever, Amen. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. A reading from Luke, the 24th chapter. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance for forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. O Lord, have mercy on us. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now, in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Don't ever forget why we are here, dear Christians. Don't ever forget what we're striving and working for each day whether it's at the computer screen or the copy machine, but also around your dinner table as you kiss your spouse on the way out the door, maybe even as you grab a beer with your friends after work. 
Don't ever be satisfied until sins are forgiven. That's the goal of it all. It's the whole point. We're here because Christ Jesus the crucified is risen. We know the Scriptures that testify about Him. And that means that repentance for the forgiveness of sins is to be preached in Christ's name always. Repentance is for something, Luke says. It drives toward, it leads into, and it won't be satisfied until something, that something is the forgiveness of sins. The forgiveness of your sins. Don't forget about this yourself, dear saints. Don't lose sight of this in your work and in your home and with your neighbor. If it helps, remember what Luther writes in the large catechism. He says everything in the Christian church is ordered to this end, that we daily receive nothing but the forgiveness of sins through the word and the sacraments to comfort and to encourage our consciences in Christ as long as we live. And of this, Psalm 32 is maybe the greatest teacher. This penitential psalm that shows us from the very start to its finish what the unforgettable gift and goal of repentance really is. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, and whose sin is covered. In the Christian church, we are not satisfied. We are not at rest or content until our sins... The sins of our neighbors are all, likewise, brought into forgiveness. It's not the one who needs no repentance who is blessed. It is the one who is forgiven. Likewise, it's not what we say about ourselves, what we impute to our own names, the accounting that we give of ourselves to others in public or just to ourselves in front of the mirror. That is not what will make your life blessed. No, it comes by the Lord's accounting. Blessed is the one to whom the Lord counts, credits, imputes no iniquity. Now, repentance must come first. This is true. Jesus himself ordered it this way. What stands in the way of forgiveness is usually deceit deep in our hearts, lies that we tell ourselves and tell God. Admittedly, our deceit often includes imagining that we are the God to whom we really must give satisfaction. Psalm 32 talks about how the Lord, through His Word and His Spirit, presses on us to squeeze out some truth-telling out of deceitful hearts. He crushes the self-righteous spirit in us that avoids repentance at all costs because that would mean never ending up at the forgiveness of sins either. And so God burns up your very bones, David writes, He dries up your substance like that husk of a frog that you've seen crushed on the blacktop. And you know the words of David's confession that were squeezed out of him. They're often part of ours too. I acknowledge my sin. I confess my transgression. I am the man. I thought. I spoke. I did that thing. And I am that sort of sinner because of it. This is the truth. It's a truth that hardly seems any good to retell. It's agonizing to even say it just to our own ears. Now, I can't say honestly whether it is a more painful thing to confess that sin or if it's more painful to hide it away in groaning bones until you finally dry up and die. But what I can preach is that it is worth pressing on toward the goal because Christ forgives the iniquity of your sin. This is where pain is to be brought because this is where pain ends. The pain both of sin and of getting it off your dried-up chest and everything else that comes with it. 
hide it in God in Christ. God is the proper hiding place for all of these things, not our chests. God is the hiding place for sinners because He forgives them. And that's why sins in the church aren't to be sidestepped or ignored or downplayed or just overlooked or forgotten in the church. Not until they have been brought entirely into the forgiveness of sins. Not only is God a hiding place for us, as verse 7 says, preserving you from trouble in Christ's wounds, forgiving your sins by His redeeming death. Now it goes on to say something very important. David says that He surrounds you with shouts of deliverance or with songs of redemption. This means that it is God's will that the forgiveness of sins would be echoing in your ears all the time from all sorts of voices. God gives you the church. He gives you every fellow saint that you have to echo this redemption and to say in so many words again, remember, dear penitent, that you are blessed because your sins are forgiven for Christ's sake. Our churches teach that individual confession and absolution is not to be despised. It's to be treasured for just this purpose, that everyone would learn to hide themselves, not in their own silent groaning that gets nowhere, or worse, blab it all over the Internet, but in repentance that would actually end up in the forgiveness of your sins. And with that gift, every other proclamation of the gospel, every celebration of the sacrament, all of the songs and the shouts that fill in the gaps between them in our services, together with the words that we speak directly to one another each day, dear Christians, this is how Jesus Christ is seeing that in His Christian church, your sins are daily and richly forgiven. He's not satisfied until it has been brought into the forgiveness of sins. He surrounds you with this steadfast love, His mercy for Jesus' sake. He leads you once again, continually, constantly, into the forgiveness of sins for His own name's sake. He declares that you are, for Christ's sake, righteous ones. Those with a heart that is neither crooked nor dirty nor ashamed anymore. You are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us for chapel. Today we pray for the Reverend Thomas and Mary Adlin and the Reverend Vance and Linda Becker who serve the Lord in Kenya. The broadcast of chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. To learn more about LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces, visit kfuo.org chapel.